வணக்கம் தி மஸ்ட் நோ சீரீஸ் சிம்பிளிஃபைங் லேர்னிங் எலக்ட்ரோ மயோகிராஃபிக் ஸ்டடீஸ் an important electrophysiological testing is the electromyography in this video we shall see the must know points about electromyography and the interpretation so far we have seen about the electrical activities going on inside the nerve we shall now see the electrical activities within the muscle we shall analyze the electrical activity in a normal muscle a denervated muscle and a reinnervating muscle so that it will help us in our clinical diagnosis in any normal muscle there are three phases of activity in the first phase it's called the insertional activity which occurs in response to a needle being placed into the affected muscle for recording the emg the second phase occurs with the needle inside the muscle and with the muscle at rest when the muscle starts contracting the third phase occurs this is the type of usual recording when the needle is inserted into the muscle usually there is not much of electrical activity in the second phase when the muscle is at rest when the muscle starts contracting the motor unit action potential or the muap is formed and with increased strength of the contraction the increase in the electrical activity is recorded on the other hand in a denervated muscle there are three types of electrical activity noticed the fibrillation potentials are seen early at 2 weeks in the proximal muscles and about 3 to 6 weeks in the distal muscles there will also be some voluntary motor unit for action potentials which signifies a better prognosis in a denervated muscle we also have what is known as positive sharp waves both are not seen if it is only a neuropraxia and both will disappear in about 2 to 6 weeks if collateral sprouting occurs this shows how the positive sharp waves appear and lastly we have what is known as a prolonged f wave in this context we shall see what the f wave signifies it is defined as a response by retrograde stimulation from the spinal cord we know that when recording for a motor unit action potential when we stimulate over the motor nerve the stimulus passes distally and stimulates the muscle at the same time another activity is going on the stimulus that we had given not only travels distally also travels proximally to the spinal cord there it stimulates the anterior horn cells and another stimulus travels down the nerve and stimulates the muscle again and causes what is known as a f wave which is a small depolarization that occurs this is the f wave when the muscle starts getting reinnervated early signs of recovery can be detected on emg the first is the occurrence of nascent potentials and the presence of unstable polyphasic potentials along with this there is a decreased number of fibrillation potentials and increased number of motor unit potentials the nascent potentials are short duration small amplitude and polyphasic waves while the polyphasic potentials are different from the normal triphasic potentials that are recorded in the normal muscle but we also need to keep in mind that emg recovery does not always ensure relevant clinical recovery to summarize the emg findings the motor unit action potential in a normally innervated muscle the positive spike waves and the fibrillation potentials that are recorded in denervated muscles and the nascent potentials recorded in a reinnervating muscle with a few fibers getting reinnervated in the beginning the clinical significance of the emg is that evidence of early reinnervation on conventional emg by about 6 that to 9 months can be done and it will obviate the need for any nerve surgery but this should be considered only after considering the length of the nerve that needs to be regenerated in brachial plexus injuries denervation changes in the rhomboid and the serratus anterior muscles along with the paraspinal musculature indicates proximal damage but it does not indicate whether the injury is associated with avulsion rupture or axonotmesis to see an example of interpretation of the snap cmap and the needle emg activity in a mild carpal tunnel syndrome there is a prolonged latency in the sensory nerve action potential 
but the CMAP and needle and ENG activity are normal. The latency gets further prolonged and also associated with decreased the amplitude in a SNAP when the severity of the carpal tunnel syndrome becomes moderate. The CMAP slowly gets prolonged. When the carpal tunnel syndrome is severe, the SNAP is absent. There is a prolonged latency and decreased amplitude in the CMAP. Even the needle EMG shows abnormal activity because the muscles are getting denervated. So basically we need to remember that the amplitude that is recorded represents the activity of the axons and the velocity that is being recorded represents the myelination which determines the speed of conduction of the electrical stimulus. So to compare the findings in axonal degeneration and demyelination, the sensory or motor amplitudes, the distal latencies, the conduction velocities, the F-wave recording and latencies and the presence of conduction block will reveal the type of injury to the nerve.